in my last video i showed you how to create depth with watercolors so in this video i wanted to show you another four techniques that i've recently been practicing that you can try out as well to create four different effects the first effect you can try out is creating fog or mist here you want to start off by applying a thin layer of water all over the paper making sure it's only glossy so there shouldn't be any pools of water once you have that, load up your brush with any color of your choice. And then while the paper is still wet, apply the paint to the top and the bottom of the paper and then blend it out towards the center while keeping the middle part really light. This is going to be the first part of the misty effect. Now while the paper is still wet, we can start adding mountains or trees starting at the center. As you can see, I simply dabbed on slightly darker blue paint to the paper, creating these triangle shapes that just blend into the background. This is similar to the previous technique where I showed you how to create depth in your paintings. Here you want to make sure that you still keep some white space and just lightly blend out the tree shapes. So basically, we want to see a light silhouette of the trees poking out while disappearing into the fog at the same time. And then repeat these steps with a few more trees to create several rows. Now let everything completely dry and then we can move on to the second row of trees that is slightly less covered in the fog. This time use a slightly darker version of the same color you chose and then add more trees the same way. But since the paper is dry, the outlines of the trees will be a lot sharper so they're kind of more in focus and they won't blend into the background. But to keep the misty effect, paint the top part of the trees that's poking out of the fog and then blend out the bottom half with a clean damp brush. As you can see, I didn't make the trees super detailed, I just simply dabbed on the paint while recreating the shape of a tree. But of course you can look at a reference picture and decide what type of tree you want to paint. Add as many trees as you want, just make sure you don't add too many at once or you might cover all the foggy white space. Also, depending on how close or far away the trees are, you can play around with how dark or light you want to paint the trees. I wanted to keep the scenery really foggy, so only a few tree tops were darker than the rest. Let everything dry again and then we can focus on the foreground of the painting. Here I worked rather in layers and covered up a bigger part of the lower area to create a big silhouette of the trees similar to the scenery in one of my previous videos where I showed you how to create depth by painting multiple layers. These trees are in the foreground so they are darker and also less covered in the fog. But depending on how you want to make your scenery look like, again, you can still play around with how light or dark you want the trees to be, really depending on how much fog or mist you want to create. I also didn't wait for the paint to dry before I added a new layer, but rather painted wet and wet to create a very loose transition between the trees. Here I also darkened the silhouette every time I added a new layer, I added a little bit of dark brown so it's even darker. And I also rather dabbed on the paint, I didn't try to paint everything super neatly. And I really like the pattern it created. And this is a very quick and abstract way to create fog in your painting. Now if you wondered how to create fluffy animals with watercolors super easily, I'll show you another quick trick. To show you this technique, I'm going to outline a cat silhouette using a black watercolor pencil, but of course you can draw any fluffy animal you like. Here you want to make sure the sketch is slightly smaller as you want the final painting to be because we will add a lot of paint later that will expand towards the sides. Next, apply a little bit of water all over the drawing and slightly around the outline. This will make sure that when the paint expands, the outline will be covered as well. And then we can start adding paint to the sketch. Here I just used black watercolor paint and added it right to the center of the sketch. And then I carefully distributed the paint inside the outlines. Because we also used the wet and wet technique here, the wet paint will start melting on the paper and then distribute itself towards the sides creating this fluffy effect. You'll see that in the beginning the cat looks rather small but later it turns into a big fluffy cat. That's why you want to start with a small sketch so you have enough space around on the paper. And to make sure that the paint and the water don't start spreading like crazy, you want to control the amount of water you keep adding with the paint. So rather dab off excess water on a piece of tissue paper so you have more paint than water on your brush when you add the paint. 
Now watercolors look a lot lighter when dry so what you can do instead you can also use black ink for example or use watercolors out of the tube so you get as much pigment as you can. This is the basic technique behind the fluffiness. Of course you can play around with how you incorporate that into your painting. Another request I got a lot is on how to create reflections in water. In this video I wanted to show you a very basic and easy way you can try out. To show you the technique I first painted a few trees along the horizon. I started with a very bright green color and built it up with additional darker layers. Again, I simply dabbed on the paint while recreating the overall shape of a round tree. I kept the right side lighter and the left side darker so it creates more dimension. Now to add more texture to the trees, I also use a bristle brush that is usually used for acrylics or oil. Here I dabbed the brush into a dark green color and then dabbed it on top of the trees to add texture. Now here it's important that the brush is rather dry so the dots the brush creates aren't too thick. I think this way the tree looks a little bit more interesting and it also kind of adds a very cute anime feel to it, don't you think? Then I added the tree stamp and the grass below the trees with the same brush while making sure that the lower parts of the trees are darker because here they get the least amount of light. Now to create the reflection, start by applying a thin layer of water below the trees and then distribute a little bit of blue colored paint starting at the bottom. You want to blend it out upwards so the blue fades out. Now while the paper is still wet, Load up your bristle brush with green paint and then create a thin line slightly below the trees so there is a small gap in between. Once you have that, you can carefully drag the paint downwards. Now here you want to pay attention to the trees. Wherever the tree is darker, you want to use darker paint and where it's lighter and brighter, use the same bright shade. Also, the reflection shouldn't be too long or otherwise it will look a little bit off. So here I try to keep the reflection about the same size as the height of the trees. Also, keep in mind that the bristle brush is rather harsh on the paper. So try to move the brush really gently over the paper so you don't damage it by scrubbing over it too much. Now this water is super quiet so there is no real movement on it. This is why the water rather looks like a mirror but you can also use a clean damp brush and lift off a few lines here and there to create small waves in the water. Finally we can paint the sky. Here I use the same blue color and blend it out towards the trees. Technically you can of course paint the sky first before you paint the trees. I was just a little bit impatient. This is just one of the ways how you can easily create reflections in the water. Now the next effect is rather adventurous. Here we are going to create sun rays that shine through the clouds on a very gloomy day but at the same time it can also be rain. Because for this technique I will be moving the paper around, I taped it down to the back side of a watercolor block. I started off by applying a little bit of water to the upper part of the paper and then added some blue colored paint. Since I wanted the paint to move downwards, I'm holding the paper slightly up and then I repeated this step. I left out some space and applied a little bit of water and paint and made it run downwards. The white space I left out will be the area where the sun will shine through later. So I continued to build up the intensity of the paint so you can see it looked really interesting because I was really curious how it will look in the end. Now to create texture and to add clouds, I soaked up some of the paint with a tissue paper. And from here I built up the intensity and the darkness of the color even more. But to make the sun rays or the rain itself, at some point I only added clean water while holding the paper slightly vertically so the water moves downwards while pushing away the paint. So this way we create this even transition between light and the blue sky in the background. It's really complicated to explain I think because it actually was just experimenting and playing around because I really wanted to see how it will turn out and I really liked how the paint and the water created unique patterns. And this is how the first layer came to life. And once the first layer was dry, it looked like this. Now you can actually use this result for an under the ocean painting as well because the scene kind of looks like water as well, don't you think? But instead I added mountains and the trees the same way as in my previous paintings and just played around with it. I think all these techniques give you so many options what you can do with them, so I hope it gave you some inspiration for your future art. If you haven't checked out my previous videos I've been mentioning, you can check them out right here. 
I really hope this video was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!